Election Day in Oklahoma. Happy Valentine's evening from the Oklahomans newsroom. I'm Dave Morris. Various races across the state, various races here in the metro. You may have seen people with the I Voted sticker. You may not have. We're tracking voter turnout as well. Oklahoma City City Council races, school board races, Edmund Bond proposals, and City Council races in Norman. We got it covered for you here tonight. As I mentioned, I'm Dave Morris here in the Oklahoman's video studio, joined by Ben Felder from the Oklahoman. Good evening, yeah. sir. Good evening. You have spoken with a number of our reporters in Norman and in Edmond, and we'll get to those interviews here shortly. But first, among the races we're following locally in Oklahoma City, school board races. Yeah, school board, three seats up for grabs. That includes the chair seat, which is a district-wide race, kind of like the mayor of the school board. And then you have uh, two districts within the school district. Uh, both zones are in the north part of the district, North Oklahoma City, are also up for grabs. And right now it looks like we're looking at a runoff for all three. So if a candidate is able to receive uh, over 50% of the vote, they went out right. If not, the top two vote getters will move on to an April 4th primary or April 4th runoff. And again, the, the runoff will be April 4th. We'll do this again for yeah. those three uh, positions, it appears. Uh, yes, and uh, uh, right now we're, uh, we're tracking those races. Uh, Paula Lewis, an uh, incumbent who's running for chair. Uh, Stanley Hupfeld, a, uh, a challenger, kind of a well-known uh, face here in Oklahoma City. They look like they're going to be the two that are going to be moving off to the runoff. And like I said, runoffs in the other two races as well. All right, very good. We also had uh, Oklahoma City City Council races up tonight. Uh, our Bill Crum joined us in the studio just a second ago looking at that. And before we get to that interview, what I found was interesting is voter turnout. You're looking at the Oklahoma City School Board you are thinking, hey, compared to what you've seen in the past, and not to put words in your mouth, yeah. voter turnout perhaps up. He mentioned for city council, perhaps down a little bit. Yeah, and so these aren't necessarily the same zones and, and, sure. and maps. Uh, Oklahoma City, the Oklahoma City public school system, doesn't include all of Oklahoma City and goes into some neighboring towns. Oklahoma City, the, the city council races, they do include, include all of the city, but they just include parts of, of the city. Um, yeah, actually, in the school board races, we're actually seeing turnout, uh, turnout is higher than it was in uh, 2013, the last time we saw these three seats up for grabs. Uh, we also saw 11 can candidates, and so uh, we kind of had a, an idea that maybe with a crowded field that, that might drive up interest and drive up turnout, um, but uh, that's not the case all across the metro. It has been a rainy Valentine's Day across the state and certainly across the metro, and that may or may not have affected some of the turnouts at the poll. Now we're joined by our Bill Crum from the Oklahoma and taking a look at some of these city council races today in Oklahoma City. Uh, about 70 percent of the vote counted so far. Uh, Ward 7 on, in Northeast Oklahoma City is clear, clear, clearly a runaway for uh, Councilman John Pettis. John Pettis, you're right. He's got like 84 percent of the votes from what we're seeing and right. Right, about 60 percent of those precincts reporting. Right, right. And uh, and he's just why in the past few minutes widened that lead just a little bit more, even if that, if you can imagine that's possible. Okay. Um, Ward four is an open seat. Uh, Richard Morissette, who is a former legislator, and Todd Stone, who is a developer and home builder, are running there. Uh, Morissette, I think, had hopes of uh, winning this one outright, and he's running a little bit below 50 percent. Uh, Stone is in the 30s, and. Uh, uh, that one will go to a runoff if neither candidate gets at least 50 percent. So on all of these, 50 percent is the... Yeah, you need, yeah these are all uh, multi-candidate multi races and you need 50 percent plus one to, uh, to avoid a runoff. And that Ward 4 there has replaced the open seat with Pete, Pete White. Pete White, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay. He's been there for a long time and, uh, and is retiring. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in Ward 1, James Greiner is being challenged by uh, primarily Chris Gordon and also Jonathan Clure. And uh, Gordon and Greiner are close. Gordon uh, is a little bit below 50 percent. Greiner's a little bit above 50 percent, the last we checked. And uh, Greiner's a first-term councilman. He's trying to hold on to his seat. In Ward 3, Larry McAtee, who is a longtime councilman, is running in the low 50 percent in a three-way three -way race right now. Uh, Matthew Olson has got about 35 percent, 36 percent at, at, at this point. McAtee's been trending down a little bit, uh, so we'll see if he hangs on. Chatting with the Oklahomans, Bill Crum on our election coverage here tonight. Bill, what are you hearing on voter turnout? Uh, it looks pretty low. I, I look back uh, at April of 2013, the last time these 
council seats were on the uh, ballot and it was also cold and rainy <laughs> and not very many people showed up to vote. And it, it looks like it could even be lower this time than it was then. Ben, from what you're seeing on these and the full wards, any surprises, any thoughts on context? Well, not too surprising. I mean, the incumbents are doing pretty well, and I think that's probably to be expected. Incumbents usually kind of come in with the advantage. Um, and that's this, these are interesting races to, to watch because a lot of, uh, you know, there's always big decisions obviously happening at City Hall, but we're kind of entering a uh, kind of an important next few years here. Uh, we're seeing some of the bigger maps projects uh, come online. Uh, the convention center construction will be underway. Decisions will be made about a conven convention center hotel um, and some other economic development options that uh, sometimes you see uh, challengers to the council uh, which has traditionally been a very pro, I don't want to say pro-economic development, kind of a pro kind of chamber uh, moving forward in the same direction that we've been going. You see some of these candidates come that uh, maybe kind of offer a different view and so when the incumbents do well like they are so far tonight, um, it usually bodes well for in terms of what the voters believe in the direction that city's going and, and right now it shows that uh, they're, they're pretty supportive. We mentioned Oklahoma City Public Schools, Oklahoma City City Council races. Our Bill Crone joined us there for the uh, City Council you had a chance to uh, get our Jane Glenn Cannon on the phone to talk about some races in Norman. Yeah, three uh, ward seats, or three council seats up for grabs in uh, Norman. And we saw some incumbents on the ballots that uh, are doing pretty well, uh, even despite uh, taking on some challengers this year. And we're going to go to the uh, Oklahomans, uh, Jane Cannon, who's been following those uh, three uh, council, or those three ward races. And uh, Jane, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. Well, uh, first off, we understand that we've got the, the results in for all three races. Uh, what do they show? What are we seeing as the uh, election results are final here? It looks like in Ward 1, uh, the incumbent Greg Heupel has been unseated by Kate Bierman. Uh, she won 327 votes over to his 265. A third candidate, Victor Reyes, drew 14 votes. Uh, so I think uh, Hypo has lost his Ward 1 seat. In the Ward 5 race, it is very close. Uh, there's still one precinct out, but that shouldn't change things. Uh, it'll probably be a runoff between candidate uh, Sarita Wilson and the incumbent James Chapel. Uh, Philip Hillian uh, is a not a close third. <laughs> he was a third candidate. Yeah, so those top two vote recipients, because no one's received uh, 50 plus 1 percent on those uh, vote recipients, so exactly. those, those two highest will be going on to a runoff. Exactly. The runoff will be April 4th. In Ward 7, incumbent Stephen Holman, uh, it looks like all the precincts have reported in, and he's retained his seat for a third term. Uh, he drew 181 votes to Tracy Baker's 48. Tracy Baker is an OU freshman. She's 18. She was the youngest, she is the youngest person to ever have uh, filed for a seat on a, the council. Uh, and Stephen, uh, like I said, is, uh, this will be his third term. He does face some legal issues he was manager of the Friendly Market in Norman that was raided by police last December. And as a result of that, he was charged with one felony count of acquiring proceeds from drug activity and 12 misdemeanor counts of possessing drug paraphernalia. Uh, what he has told me is that he's confident he will win, that he's innocent of the charges, and that if he didn't think that he wouldn't prevail, he would never have filed for re-election. But that is one issue he faces. Yeah, well, some, something to follow here, but uh, obviously uh, a, a strong showing tonight in election as he, uh, as he wins re-election. Well, Jane, thanks so much for your time, uh, and uh, obviously we'll be uh, following along here as we move to a runoff, at least uh, in one of these uh, award races in Norman. Always good to hear from Jane Glenn Cannon. She covers Norman very well for us uh, in the Oklahoma. You can follow her coverage in the Oklahoma and online at newsok.com. On the north part of town, Edmond, they had uh, a bond proposal and a uh school board seat there as well, up for grabs. Yeah, I suppose we maybe could have uh, safely predicted that the bond would uh, do pretty well tonight. 57 bond proposals in a row going back to 1959 have been successful in Edmond, and that seemed to be the case tonight. You spoke with our Steve Gust for more. Steve, how are you tonight? Fine, fine, thanks. 
Yeah, so like I said, we've got uh, a, a bond package, uh, split our uh, two bond proposals on the ballot. Um, I want to ask you about that, but first, uh, what can you tell us about the uh, school board race that's taking place in uh, Edmond today? Yes, we have a three-term incumbent, Kathleen Duncan, and she's taking on Challenger, Chad Mullen. They're both going for a five-year term in office number two in the Edmond district with five seats on the Edmond school board. And so there's a little over half the um, precincts reporting in, and Kathleen right now has a, a 60 to 38 percent lead. She has 413 votes to Mullins 269, so she's got a fairly healthy lead there. Yeah, and uh, we're still waiting on some uh, precincts to come in on the bond election, but we've we've got some uh, early results coming in that show that this uh, this issue is passing. Uh, we need a 60 percent. Uh, approval for the bond to pass. Uh, first, before you tell us the results, uh, these are these are two bond packages, correct? And, and what are these what are these going towards? Okay, uh, yes. Um, proposition number one, that is the lion's share of it. It's one hundred and nine point one million dollars, and uh, while every school campus will benefit from something with this package, the uh, more than half of it's going to go to the three Edmond High Schools. And the marquee projects at two of those high schools, Edmund North and Edmund Memorial, are stadium upgrades so that they can add more seats and host varsity football games like they did at Santa Fe High School. The stadium opened last fall. And, uh, but at each three of the campuses, they will also have safe room shelters so that, uh, so that they can withstand a EF5 twister winds. So... That is going to be, like I said, more than half of that. Now, the second proposition is transportation. That's only $1.9 million. And the deal is, is that they have to have a, um, they have to keep those, by law, they have to do uh, transportation issues different. But, like I said, they're both over 80% right now. This, I'm not at a decision desk, but I, you know, if you were, you'd almost be tempted to project wins for both of those. Yeah, and maybe not too surprising given the fact that uh, Edmonds passed uh, 57 bonds in a row going back to, to 1959. So a lot of support, uh, historic support in, in the Edmond Public School District. Yeah, that that's right. And also the, the fact, too, is that um, uh, the property valuations in Edmond have risen so much, and also they're retiring some of these bonds as they go. So it's not the, – the average homeowner probably won't see too much of an increase if at all, in their, in their property taxes. So that was another reason. Like you said, looks like we can almost chalk up 58 in a row. Well, the Oklahoman Steve Gus covering uh, a bond election and a school board race in Edmond. Thank you, Steve. Hey, thanks a lot. Appreciate the call. There you have it, some coverage from Edmond with our Steve Gust from Norman Jangling Cannon, our Bill Crome covering Oklahoma City City Council. Ben, let's go back to the Oklahoma City School Board, those races. Uh, let's go through some of the candidates. We're thinking all three will be going towards the April 4th runoff. Let's start with the board chair. What can you tell us? Yeah, five candidates competing for the chair position. So that uh, is a district-wide uh, vote that happened today. Uh, we're still waiting on a few more precincts to come in, but we can safely say that uh, Paul Lewis, a current member of the school board, and Stanley Huffeld are going to be heading off to that April 4th runoff. Uh, uh, Stanley uh, with 40% of the vote, Paula with 37% of the vote, um, and in third place is uh, Wilfredo Santos Rivera with uh, 10%. So she's safely in that second position. So those two who were kind of seen as the front runners, I think, going in, like I said, uh, uh, Paulo is the uh, current member of the board, has that kind of name recognition and a known name in the community. Uh, Stanley Huffelt has been a successful uh, member of the community and since, uh, you know, leading Integris and, and kind of a uh, a known uh, known figure in corporate uh, Oklahoma City, in fact, kind of ran on that platform. And those are going to be the two that are going to get a chance to compete for the votes here as we move to April. Charter school is a, is a talking point on their on their election, right? Yeah, in, in some ways. I mean, uh, Mr. Huffelt has uh, has talked positively about charters. I mean. 
as anybody says when you ask them about charters, they'll say, you know, you know, we want good charters, not bad charters, and charters is really just a relationship that a school has with the district. There is no single definition of what a charter is. Um, but, you know, it's perceived that Mr. Hupfield is um, more uh, embraceive of the charter concept. He actually led a charter expansion push last year that a few schools brought. Uh, Paula has seemed to be a little bit more skeptical of the issue. I don't know if you could say that charters are the uh, de facto referendum of this race, but they They've definitely been a theme, and they will be with these two uh, candidates moving to the runoff. For office number one, Nathan Shirley, Charles Henry, Cheryl Poole were the candidates there. Yeah, two more precincts left to report, but it looks like uh, Charles Henry uh, is the top vote recipient with 37%, so it'll be another runoff. Uh, Henry is a, an attorney in Oklahoma City. Uh, Cheryl Poole, a retired teacher, coming in at second with 34% of the vote. So those two will be the, the runoff in the uh, district, uh, district 1 race. In District 2, Justin Ellis, Rebecca Budd, Nick Singer. Yeah, so we've got two precincts left to report. This one may swing, but right now Rebecca Budd is clearly going to be the top vote recipient with 37%, a, uh, a, a strong volunteer in the uh, district who's been kind of uh, a presence in the school board meetings. She's a, a volunteer at MLK Elementary School in Northeast Oklahoma City. Uh, she's going to be moving on definitely, it seems. Uh, Nick Singer, 32% of the vote. Looks like he's likely to face Rebecca in a runoff, but Justin Ellis, the incumbent, is at 30 percent and we don't really we're not able to tell which precincts we're waiting on so it's possible that if uh, some of these last two were, were strong ones for Ellis that he could uh, you know gain on on Singer he's looking for 40 more votes but it seems likely that Bud and Singer are going to be moving on to that runoff so uh, three races tonight uh, three runoffs in April be interesting to see what the turnout is then yeah uh, definitely like I said we've we've seen turnout in all three races have surpassed what we saw in 2013. So it's kind of hit or miss in some of these other races, but right now in the Oklahoma City public school races, uh, turnout probably relative to, to what you'd like to see, still low, but uh, an improvement over uh, four years ago. Ben Felder with the Oklahoman. One last question for you on the way out here. Uh, you attended a candidates forum uh, for the Hispanic crowd a week ago. Um, you heard from people who attended there that um, getting the Hispanics engaged has been a, a bit of an issue, uh, or perhaps they're not as engaged as they would like to be when it comes to voter turnout and involved like this, but they make up the majority of the Oklahoma City Public Schools. Yeah, over half of the student population is Hispanic, and within that Hispanic uh, definition is a diverse set of students too. The majority are of Mexican descent, but uh, a lot of students that come from uh, countries of Central America. Um, but yeah, so Hispanic issues become a, a pretty big theme here in Oklahoma City. Uh, many people in the Hispanic community have tried to uh, drive up turnout, especially in South Oklahoma City, where there is such a large presence of Hispanic families have kind of lamented that it's been a struggle and uh, there's a variety of reasons for that. Some have said that you know there are cultural reasons. Um, turnout is overall just low anyway so it's kind of hard to just peg one community for a low turnout um, when you know met citywide that's kind of been the case but uh, really low in the Hispanic community. Um, you know, I actually had some readers, I wrote a story last week, it, it responded and said, you know, well, maybe the fact that we've got a, a growing undocumented population is to, to, is to blame. And there's probably definitely part of that, but the majority of Hispanic families, the majority of Hispanic residents in Oklahoma City are American-born. They're citizens. Good conversation to keep having. Definitely. He's been Felder with the Oklahoman, ongoing uh, all sorts of coverage. Uh, you cover the gamut of things, including education. <laughs> Thank you for your time tonight. More you election coverage can be found online at newsok.com, including those final election result numbers. And we'll break down those numbers over the upcoming days as well. You can find coverage in the Oklahoma as well.